Hello everyone, my name is John McNair and I am an attorney in Addison, Texas and I am an elder law and estate planning attorney. I uh, want to talk today about a blog post I recently posted on my website about Medicaid crisis planning uh, or I can expand that, the elder law crisis planning. There's two types of elder law planning. We're trying to help people qualify for governmental benefits to pay for long-term care. And uh, one type of planning is proactive planning. They're healthy. Uh, they have maybe five years to wait in case of Medicaid planning or three years to wait in the case of planning for VA benefits. And they wanna make a gift into an irrevocable trust, wait, uh, over five years for Medicaid or over three years for VA. And then those gifts don't count against you. You don't have to report them and you have reduced your countable resources so that you may be eligible at that point. But today I'm talking about crisis planning. You're on the doorsteps of needing skilled nursing level care right now, or you need assisted living right now. Uh, if in Texas, Medicaid for long-term care is primarily available at the skilled nursing level. Uh, they do not fund the programs for uh, long-term care outside of skilled nursing to such an extent that there are long waiting lists for uh, long-term care outside of a skilled nursing, usually a year to two years. And there are very, very few Medicaid beds and assisted living or memory care units in the North Texas area. There are some, but it's fairly rare. So you need to get into a nursing home right now, and particularly the blog post uh, was focused on married couples. There are rules related to married couples in the federal Medicaid rules called spousal impoverishment rules. They are intended to make sure that the spouse still living at home is not driven into poverty by paying for the long-term care of the spouse who needs skilled nursing care. And we can use those uh, rules to help the community spouse protect, I would say, virtually all of the assets in the vast majority of cases. I would say in the blog post talks about uh, three phases to that planning. First, making sure that you have all of the um, disability planning documents in place, particularly powers of attorney. It is the case in spousal impoverishment uh, cases that you will need to get the assets over into the name of the community spouse fairly quickly, and so we need to be able to transfer the title. Uh, second, we need to make a really complete assessment of the couple's assets and income. If they have very low income, there are rules in Texas which allow us to expand the amount that can be protected over to the community spouse. And in the vast majority of cases, that will allow us to protect all of the assets to the community spouse. Even if their income is higher, there are other techniques that we can use to protect almost all of the assets over the community spouse. So if there's a spouse at home, if there's a very, very good chance that we can protect all of their assets and still get Medicaid. So once we do the financial assessment, then we uh, determine what techniques we want to use, how are we going to get this person eligible. We enter into those techniques and then we make an application. Those are the three phases. Look at the documents the um, disability planning documents. Second, we make a financial analysis and then we come up with techniques to obtain eligibility. And third, we make an application. If there's ever a situation where you think I can help you in that, if you're looking at that situation right now or if you know a family member that's looking at that situation, or if you're healthy now, but you think that you might want to do some proactive planning to help pay for long-term care down the road, uh, you can certainly give me a call 
the best way to do that is to go to my website and there's a book a call button where you can book a free consultation. It's a very brief initial consultation. I'll figure out if I can help you and then if we can, then we'll uh, schedule a longer, fuller consultation. I'll get your financial information and uh, then we'll make an assessment and then we'll go from there. All of my planning is on a flat fee basis and in that consultation process, I'll be able to give you a flat fee quote for all the services. So please contact me by going to my website and uh, booking a call. Thank you very much.